Hello, how are you? Uh, hey, good, how are you? I'm good, good. Nice to meet you. I was, I was in the link and I was like, no one's here and what's going on? Yeah, <laughs> I was having some tech issues and then it got all worked out. I made sure the link was good. So yeah, we're uh, we're good to go. Okay. All right. Cool, so, nice uh, to meet you. Nice meeting you. So where are you based out of? I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, okay. I'm in California. Northern. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I'd rather be Golden there. Gate. Cross the Golden Gate Bridge. So. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, my yeah. my favorite radio station is actually based out there. And uh, I think it's Santa Clarita, I think, is where it comes out. It's called KCSM. It's a jazz station. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. On the That's campus probably... of San Mateo. Oh, it is. It is. San Mateo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, that's well, only, cool, that's man. only like 40 minutes away. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right on. And that's kind of how Kansas City is. Everything's just kind of connected, but we have a little bit of a drive, so it uh it pans out that way. But um well, hey, before we are you ready to dive right in? Are you good? Sure. Yeah, okay. we can get started. Cool. Yep. So, the first thing I want to ask you is how did you survive COVID? The last 3 years was quite an ordeal. How did you get through it and how has it changed the way that you do things now? I'm on Zoom all the time. I never use Zoom before, never. Yeah. And it's been life changing in the way of being able to connect with people and have that face to face, like having coffee with people anywhere, anytime. And the other thing was my business picked up in COVID because people were home. Yeah. And the t the tools that you see behind me, they're to help you at home. I invented them so people could use them at home to help themselves when I'm not standing there telling you, put your feet wider, put your feet closer. And if you do you do a live um, like video, do you have video going or is it just a podcast on hearing? When it's you do it's it? both audio and video. Yeah. So I can get up and I can do some stuff and show people. So it makes sense to them if they're watching. Sure. Um, it, I can do that for you. Is it better if it's like this with the light? Does that help? Uh, not really. I mean, it kind of illuminates you. But as far as like everything, I think the natural okay. light's doing a good job. Okay, perfect. And yeah. the sun's going down or over, uh, which gives us that glare in the back sometimes. Sure. But uh, I've been doing it out of my garage here for the, when COVID started, I, I had all my equipment that I have at a gym. I brought it here and I have a three car garage. So it's all in here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right on. So let's get to the essence of what you do for a living. Exactly. If I put you in front of a bunch of third graders and one of the kids looks up and says, Hey, what do you do for a living? How would you answer them? I help people move better and I reduce their pain. That's right on. Literally what I do. So how did this, when you were in the third grade, what was your dream? What did you want to be when you grew up? I had no, I wanted to be a basketball player. So uh, I wanted to, be, I wanted to be Curry back in the day. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I grew up on. And then when I was in college, um, I was working on sports and I, I just wasn't big enough, fast enough, strong enough. So I started looking into strength training and all that. And it was brand new when I started 30 years ago. Um, and uh, when I found the training part, it was like, it was making me faster. It was jumping higher. I was feeling great. And my athleticism got better. And I kept going after it and kept asking all these different trainers, what they were doing with their sports teams, like NFL, NBA, um, and I was always very skilled. My dad was a professional baseball player. Baseball was our game. It was natural. Uh, I went to a tryout with the Expos when I was 25 and um, went three for four and hit, hit a double off a guy throwing 98 miles an hour that no one could touch. Um, so baseball was very natural, but sports was our thing. And as I went on and on and started noticing what people needed, I noticed that they, they don't move well and they want to strengthen dysfunction. And so I helped them reduce their pain and I helped reduce, you know, the, the issues that they had, the compensations and they started moving better. Um, so, uh, one of my favorite stories that taught me about four years ago, how much this was helping people was the, um, my son was a baseball player at 12 and they had a bench press contest with the bar at our gym at the end of the day. And then the high school kids jumped in and said, hey, we want to do it. So the, the young kids did 18, the high school kids did 38, then the college kids did um, 78. And they said, Bob, what can you do? And I'm like, oh, man, I don't bench 315 anymore. Da, da, da. Let me see what I can do. I, I knew I could do 104 when I was super strong. So I hopped on there. I started doing it. I get to uh, a 78 is the thought. I got to get 79, 79. 
I do 7,500, 150, 200. And I go, what the hell? Holy shit. My routine, I don't compensate anymore. My shoulders aren't rounded forward. So I wasn't feeling like this. I was literally effortless motion, right? So that's telling me if you're mobile and you're in the proper position, you're way stronger, you're way more efficient with your movements and you'll have less pain. So yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. I thought I recognized your last name. I was a baseball card collector growing up. So your dad was a oh. major, major league player. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What was his he first was, uh, name? Uh, Warren. He he actually didn't play in the majors. He was a triple A guy in okay. um, played for the Oakland Oaks in in San Francisco, where they have uh, Safeway now. That okay. was Seal Stadium. So wow. funny. We collected cards for one year, of uh, millions of cards. We literally went out and bought. All the Rafael Palmeros, all the Will Clarks, all the long story short, we went out and bought them for like five cents each. Yeah. Will Clark, yeah, the next year they were six to ten dollars. We wow. had a duffel bag of I don't know, a thousand cards, whatever. We go into all the guys at the show, hey, you guys buying any Will Clarks? Oh, yeah, kid, because we're like 10 years old. Hey, kid, we'll take all you got. We're all sweet. We open this duffel bag, they're all, Where'd you guys get all those from you guys last year? <laughs> And so they're all, oh, we'll take 50, we'll take 100. So we came home with $6,000 wow. cash, 10 years old. Wow. <laughs> we, th we throw it on the table and we're trying to organize it. And my parents come in and go, where'd you get all that money? We're all, dad, this would be three times bigger if you gave us that other $300 we wanted. Yeah. We asked dad for $300. He said, no, not to buy baseball cards. Yeah. And uh, we said, dad, this would be, this would be like, 18,000 if you would have given the money. We would have bought more cards, but we bought everything we could at the time. Wow, so, that's wild. Yeah. I remember seeing Jack Clark on the Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. He had a really hard time with money. He went bankrupt and it was, but he, he was a car aficionado. So he got all uh -huh. these cars and, you know, it was kind of that lesson in when you're an athlete, you really have to look after your money because it can get real sticky. And well, it, it, it's so easy for those guys. All they got to do is take the money that they get, put it in the bank and yeah. spend the interest, spend yeah. all the interest, but yeah. never spend the principle that you make. You make it, let it grow, uh -huh. spend all the interest. Just tell the guy every time I make money, send it to me. Yeah. Make it, send it to me. It, then they wouldn't go broke. These yeah. fucking morons. How do you have a hundred million dollars? Like any, any of these guys, they, they make so much money nowadays. It's laughable. Yeah, um, that you can't spend it fast enough if you have it in the bank. Yeah, you know, in the stock market. You know, absolutely. So anyway. It's that's nuts. So, talk to me a little bit about who's been your hero in your life. Who's inspired you? Uh, there's been a lot of people. Um, I don't have anyone specific um, in that way. I can't say. I mean, my dad was a hard worker, so that seeing him get up every day and uh, hang out with us all the time, we didn't think our dad worked. He got up at four in the morning worked till 12 and then hung out with us in the afternoon playing baseball. So we thought our dad didn't have a job. And um, um, I mean, it's always the person that inspires me that's doing something special. You know, it really comes down to that, that at that time. I can't think of anything specific like right now. Um, but, uh, you know, I cry in all the different commercials because I feel the pain and the energy and the, and the, and the triumph, I guess. Uh, um Blindside was one of my favorite movies of that kid, you know, the how <laughs> the lady helps him, helps him, helps him, helps him. And he's like, why are you helping me? Why is it you're helping me? That sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, I'm always inspired by last night. I was I was with the guy right here. Um, big book, um, Golf in the Kingdom. Yeah. Okay. Last night they had a movie uh, that uh, one of his friends has been writing for 20 years and they had a showing right here that we went to special just for us. Yeah. And um, Michael Murphy was there signing books and I got one for my son signed by him. Nice. And uh, uh, Michael Murphy, you know, is a big time writer. Uh, yeah. So he's 92 years old. And um, so, that, I mean, that's inspiring how, how he's still really into it. He's still into sharing with people uh, the thought process of golf and all that. So, so, in your business right now, what's been one of your best success stories? Something that always puts a smile on your face. Oh, I mean, I get people that come over all the time. For example, I had the um, the Giants, San Francisco Giants doctor, his wife. A few, few months ago, she came to me. She had pain for nine months, back pain. 
So she had access to all the physical therapists, chiropractors, all the people that are with the Giants. She was seeing them all. Still had pain. She saw me on Wednesday. She saw me the following Wednesday. And then the third Wednesday, she went out and shot her lowest round of golf ever. She shot 78, pain-free. The next day she went out, she shot 77. So the husband calls me and goes, what the hell are you doing with her? He wants to come over. So a few days or a few weeks into his workout, he says to me, have you ever thought about writing a book on this? And I'm like, I've been working on it for a few years now. And I just finished up my second book. I've got a third one coming out. Um, that talks about what I teach. So yeah. the desk jockey, you guys that sit behind a desk all day, I just did a book on that and yeah. um, teaching you guys how to you know, move better. But that was one of my favorite stories because she had access to the best of the best of the best and they still don't know the little intricate things to do, which my mat, my blocks and my bands simplify it for them. So she's literally doing the workouts just as if I was standing there because wow. she knows to put her feet at one box. She knows to put her feet at three boxes. And so that goes for everyone, even pro athletes. I, I had a great story when I was down in San Diego a few years ago, working with, you know, Todd Durkin, he's the yeah. top trainer out there. He, yeah. I trained, I trained all of his trainers and he says to me, Hey Bob, can you stay and help me with my major leaguers? And I said, sure. So the next day I ran those guys through four movements that I teach with my mat and they had done medicine ball pushups before, but they had never done them like this. They had done pal off walkouts, but they had never done it like this. And Daniel Camarera, one of pitchers for the Yankees, goes, hey, Bob, I want to add some weight to this. And I go, no, no, we're actually going to lighten it, and I'm going to change your foot position. And he goes, really? And I go, yeah, watch this. So I take it, and I do it with the weight, and I show it to him, right? And I'm 53 years old. He's 27. And I add a little bit more. I'm all, yeah, this kind of light for me. So I go, and I go, let me put it back to your weight. And then he tries it. He goes once, he goes twice, and he falls over, and he goes, shit, how'd you make that look so easy? And I said, well, because my core is connected. It's just, you haven't done this before. So that's just something I see in my athletes to make you better. And it was like eye-opening to him that he's had 15 years of training. He's been around the top elite trainers, been around the top people, but he was missing a link in the kinetic chain. So those kind of things for me are fun. And I like to help people with that. And that goes from pro athlete to weekend warrior. Yeah. Everyone can improve a little bit. And um, like I said, I never started this business to make money. I started helping my clients and it turned into a business. Because uh, if I look back, would I ever do this again? No freaking way. Making things in China, trying to get things uh, patented. It is a headache, all that stuff. You know, yeah. I enjoy the training part of it. Um, and all I'm trying to do now is why I get on these podcasts and get on these things is I want to share it with people because I need to get to more of the masses of people yeah. that should know about this. I, I need to go meet with like Dick, all the big sporting stores, and I should have a section in there and I should be teaching the world this stuff because it's not going to disappear because it's a quick fix. It's not the shiny object. It's going to be here. And it's going to help you guys just feel better. Um, and like I said, for you sitting on a computer all day long, you should for one, sit on a ball like this. Yep. So if you finish, if you finish with me at the end of the call, you lay back and just stretch a little bit like this, stay here for like a minute, let it open up, and then go go on to your next call. At yeah. least that gets your spine in a better position. And yeah. then the, the other thing, I do this every night before bed. So these are those blocks, okay? So yeah. anyone can do this, right? And I just put the blocks down, I lay down, I put my hands on here, and it opens up my chest and shoulders. So I'll lay here for, you know, five, six, seven minutes. Right. So if you're if you're a really rounded guy and older, they're going to have to start right here like this. This is going to be a lot for them, you know, because they're they're so rounded forward. They can't even get their arms up there. So for for America nowadays with computer sitting uh -huh. and all this right, <laughs> and texting. Yeah. If you're doing that at least every night and laying there and letting the fascia open up, the fascia is what wraps all the muscles. So. A lot of people don't understand that, but it just opens you up. So I just before I go to bed, I lay on those for, like I said, six, seven, eight minutes. My body tells me what I need, but it's taking out rotation. Yeah. It's letting my chest fall through and it's putting my pelvis in a good position because my toes are turned in and I'm getting internal rotation in my hips, which is the opposite of what we do all day long. So, yeah. um, you know, a couple quick fixes like that. And you're like, oh, my neck doesn't hurt. You know, I feel better. So. Yeah, that's great. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
So what is the ultimate motivator for you? Every day you wake up, you're making people's lives better, yours better, staying healthy. What is that mo mo motivator for you? Well, it's really just helping helping the people. You know, it's, it doesn't feel like a job to me, like coming on the podcast, speaking to people, telling the same story, going through this. A lot of people don't know this stuff. And I was fortunate enough to really, when I started, I was the guy that I, I, I chased things. So I, I like really want to learn, 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 learn. And I'm still learning. So it's like my first year in training, I thought I was the smartest guy ever because I'm like, I had one certification. I get this. Okay, you do it like this and you got it, right? And then 30 years later, I have like 11 different certifications and I'm always grabbing from top trainers, teachers, people out there and going, wow, that's a better way to do it. Get rid of that. Whoa, that's a better way to do it. Uh, get rid of that. So um, like I said, it's just fun in that way of, I feel I'm 53 years old. So last year, because we didn't know about mobility 25 years ago, we didn't do yoga. We didn't foam roll. We just squatted, deadlifted, power lifted, lifted, bicep curl, you know, strengthen. Yeah. And remember what I said, we used to strengthen, strengthen, strengthen dysfunction, which caused, oh, my knee hurts. No, no, don't be a pussy. Just keep going, right? Just do another set. My knee's killing me. Do another set, you you pussy. So it was like, we. that's how we trained. And it's insane. So last year, I had two hip replacements. I had my right hip done in um, January. I had my left hip done in December. So... And I thought my left hip was fine. And the doctor goes, oh, no, no, you're bone on bone. I said, no, 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 I have no pain. Once you do my right hip, I'll be fine. But once they did my right hip, I said, holy shit, my left hip hurts. Yeah. I didn't notice it, though, because my right hip hurt so much. Yeah. So it was like, this wasn't much pain compared to this pain. Uh -huh. So, um, And it's because we used to box jump, jump off ladders 10 feet, land, jump in the air. We used to power clean, Olympic lift. Everything was compressing, compressing, compressing. And my ball and socket was literally bone on bone. And there's nothing you can do. You just have to go through surgery, have that done. And then it's, I mean, now I'm like, I can do anything. I can literally full squat, one leg squat. Doesn't matter what I can do. I can do everything now with yeah. the with the new hips. So it's been, it's been fantastic that way. But yeah, it's fun for me to help people, you know, because yeah. I've been through the gamut of pain. I broke my back in a car accident in college tore my rotator cuff, tore my ligaments in my knee, slipped on an ice pack and did that, broke both ankles, uh, one in high school, one in college, playing basketball, landed on a foot, snapped my ankle. So I've been through all the different injuries. Wow. And so I'm, I'm patient and I understand people's pain. Like when they talk about back pain, I mean, I had back pain for almost two years dealing with it, right? And playing golf one day, I got to play with the Sharks uh, scramble like they had a, a tournament going on and I got to play with one of the sharks and I could not lean over to putt and I was popping pills drinking beer trying to get the pain to disappear so I could play I was so excited to play golf with these guys I couldn't even putt leaning over and I was like holy shit I was so pissed that day I'll re never forget that day that I had to find a different way so I could have given up or I could have found a way. And I just tell people all the time, don't give up. Sometimes it takes two or three years to find the right person or the right thing to make a change. And that's kind of like with everything. You have to learn patience and tenacity and stay with it. You know, we're, we're in an era, I think we're in a really good era right now of understanding how the body works and fitness and how we can take care of ourselves. I mean, even from like, 10, 20 years ago, aren't we living in a pretty bespeckled time right now for you to be able to help people get to a better place? We know more. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's, it's just, sometimes people are chasing the shiny object. They think they're doing the right thing. And so you have to, it depends on the person and, and many of the top trainers are open to listening and, and kind of conversing with you. Um, but then you'll have those people that are really like locked in their ways, right? Like they only do yoga. They only do Olympic lifting. They only do, those people are tough to work with. But in general, it is definitely getting better. And um, for me, that's why I wrote the book, The Desk Jockey. I wanna help more corporate wellness programs, Google, uh, Comcast, all the big companies. I mean, they should have my tools given to their people. They yeah. should literally buy the tools. Here's your toolkit. It's 200 bucks. You have everything. And then we'll have videos and 
live Zooms to say, hey guys, how you doing today? 20 minutes, how can I help you? What's going on? Hey, I have back pain. Let's talk about your back pain. Get up, let me take a look at you. So everybody that's listening right now, do you see that his neck is forward and that kind of thing? So for 20 minutes, I could talk to 10,000 people and they could learn something, right? And then next Monday, I'll see you guys next Monday, 10 o'clock, we'll go over this again. And it could be a set thing for all of corporate wellness. All their people, 10 o'clock every Monday, we have a call. And they can sit in their office and, and, and listen and go like, oh yeah, I'm gonna try that later today. I'm gonna do that one later today. And just teach them one or two exercises. That's it. Yeah. Keep it simple. Um, and that's, that's what I'm hoping I can get out there with more people. I'm trying to find the right people because sometimes it's hard to get into Google. It's, it's hard to get in there because you're another guy selling them something. And yeah. it's like, I'm really bringing you something special and you don't know it yet. You know, you're, you're, you're going to thank me a hundred times over once you actually feel this one exercise I'm going to show you guys. I had a guy the other day that was sitting next to me at, while I was talking at a table. I was at one of my shows, Perform Better, down in um, uh, Long Beach. And he was an ex-football player that used to play for the Green Bay Packers. So he listened to me talk for six hours. And he goes, do you think you could help me? Like, And I said, well, what do you got, got going on? And I said, sure, come over here. Let me show you an exercise. So I showed him one. And I said, come here. We're going to do this one. Show him two. So I said, yeah, give him a try. You know, and da-da-da. So the next day he comes in and, and I go, damn, Chris, you, you look like you're standing taller today. He goes, Bob, I've been doing those exercises like all day long, all day long. And he says, I'm noticing the difference already. And it was one day later, but he was putting the time in doing his wall windmills. The, the, the guy hasn't stood up like that in years. He's six four, uh, 310 pounds, but wow. not fat. He was just a big man. He probably weighed 370 when he was a lineman at NFL, but he's a big man. And first time he actually was lengthened. And then I showed him how to flatten his back in the wall by doing a, a wall squat. And so he was like, Bob, I really feel better. And I'm like, dude, you're only doing two things and you just started. Give it two years and yeah. add in the other 10 things and see how you feel. So that's that's what's exciting to me is I kind of know where I'm taking you guys. And you can't see that you could get up to that side of the mountain because you're way down here and you think I'll never get there. You know, yeah. um, so it's it, that's the hard thing to get people to understand. I don't care where you are in your fitness level you're going to get better. How much? I don't know in time, but I just told this story literally yesterday to a lady who uh, called me to talk about her two kids. They're, they're both going into the academy of like uh, West Point and one's going to the Naval Academy. So they're, they need to test for the, and I trained a kid for West Point about 20 years ago. And when the kid came to me, the parents came over and they said, yeah, he needs to do this on this test and this on this. And that was the first time I ever saw the numbers on these tests. A, a 13 minute, two mile, throw a basketball 90 feet. Um, uh, that's like throwing a grenade. Uh, um, Pull-ups and then sit-ups, for example. The kid that came was the worst I've ever seen. You talk about like run, he could not run at all. He went heel to toe, bending his knees like he was joking around, like you think he was making fun of it, right? And I go, how the heck am I going to get this kid to do that? He couldn't do one pull up. He couldn't move his arm. He was dead straight, couldn't on the hang. So I'm like, holy. So long story short, I just told the lady, that kid I got to do 24 pull ups, a 13 minute two mile, which you would, if you saw him run the first time, you say, you say no possible way. Yeah. And then, um, Sit-ups, I think he did the max, the 75 or 180 or whatever the max was. But he was number one on all the charts all the way across. So that not saying I'm a good trainer. That's saying what you can do with somebody in time. That's what I'm saying. So Excellent. No, that's great. So I'm curious. Everyone out there has a perception of you. Family, friends, um, clients, colleagues but you have a perception of yourself. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh man, you're asking the tough questions here. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got me thinking like that so far. Um, I think I'm a hard worker, diligent, um, caring person about other people. Um, um, definitely consistent, you know, with everyone, with people. Um, uh, 
I'm not like starstruck in that way. It's more, it's, it's more about the people and who they are and where they came from. So it's always nice to have that conversation uh, and see where they've are and what they're, you know, being like talking to a criminal, like who's had a rough life who you think is just garbage and you, and you find out, well, he had it rough when he was a kid and went through a gamut of stuff that you wouldn't even understand because I had it easy, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so I'd, that's what I'd say. I'm, I'm caring in that way. And, uh, very understanding and like i said you're making me cry <laughs> yeah <laughs> right on yeah <laughs> so if anyone out there wants to get involved with your products hire you anything pretending your world where can they go well you can email me anytime bobby b-o-b-b-y at bammotion.com b-a-m-m-o-t-i-o-n.com and then my website is bam-metrics.com b-a-m dash metrics m-e-t-r-i-c-s dot com and uh um yeah i'd love to help you guys if you're struggling with pain or you're new to fitness or you've been in fitness for your life i mean i've done this 30 years and i, I said a long time ago when i started making these products i didn't make them to make money i made them because i wanted quality for you guys to get better and it's complementary to whatever you guys are doing so I don't care what kind of training you do, even if you're a yogi, super flexible, super strong, doesn't matter. The few things you will learn, I guarantee you, I'll teach you six things you've never done before that you'll be like, oh, this feels better. So hopefully you guys will give it a shot and um, yeah, reach out to me with questions and love to help. Excellent. Bobby, I'm going to shout Thank up you. to the mountaintops. Thanks for your time. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for having you, me on. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Take care. It was awesome. Thank you.